episode 48. Welcome to Into the 99, where we have 99 cards, because Commander's number one. I'm your host, Brian. I'm Hope. I'm Daniel. And, and to, like, to, yeah, today yeah. it is Salt Cards 2. Electric, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. Yeah, it was named by someone in our Discord, and I made me laugh real hard. Represent. We had, uh, we had a lot of salty cards left, and we wanted to finish the list off with Brian here, so... We're actually going to let Brian. So I can defend myself? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here, here's the thing, Brian. Brian we was tease, under attack. We tease because we love. Yeah. And also because, because you, play you these deserve cards. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so funny you just hey, listening to it and then having people in our Discord community go, Oh, Brian, your name was dropped a lot. 30 <laughs> minutes in, and you've already been called out 14 times. It's like he's still here with us. Yeah. It's <laughs> like he's never left. So what, this today, um, the car that we'll be starting off with is Mana Drain. A very appropriate if to mana, begin. If Mana Drain was more affordable, it would be in so many decks. It is so expensive. What, what in you, Canada, it's like 200 bucks. What do you mean? Not affordable? It's only $160. Yeah. American? But, but why is it 160 American <laughs> dollars? No. Yeah, so it's blue, blue, and it is an instant um, coming in at, what is it, Mythic Rare? And it is counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase. Add an amount of colorless to your mana pool equal to the spells converted mana cost. If you're countering something ridiculous, like I want to finish this game off and I'm going to do, oh, the black card with X. Um, Torment uh, Hellfire? Hellfire? Yes. Well, not only, do this for 20. Not oh. only that, let's say that you're hitting all of your land drops. You went second. You have two mana out for your counter spell and you hit your third land drop. You go into turn three. With six mana, if you counter one of their three cost spells already, like it's that a puts very you really far. Yeah, it's ahead. a very strong card. That's enough to cast nearly every commander that you'll see in yeah. games. It's ex- it's an extremely good early game card. It's an extremely good late game card. It's just an extremely good card in game anytime. Well, it shuts so much down, right? Yeah, it's intense. Especially to if say the, the least. first players ramping and they go to cast their like five drop on turn three. Well, or they yeah. go to cast Golos to try color fix or something, and then they just get that shut right down. Yeah, lose five mana, don't get the colors they need, and then Ooh. they're trying to cast him at seven. Like it really screws them, which is brutal. I saw Golos turn two. It was terrifying. What mana vault, mana a soul ring, yeah. or mana crypt? Which one's the three? Whatever. It was, it was one of them, and I was just like, oh. It's colorless. I was like, yeah. I thought we were playing EDH, not CEDH. <laughs> this is a fast Golos. <laughs> well, it's colorless. pretty easy. Go, it's got to go Golos fast. Well, I only had one. I, at the time that we were playing, I had no Mana Vaults or Mana Crypts or anything like that, and he's dropping it. I was like, oh. oh You're wow. like, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Over here with basic lands and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you. I can but definitely no. see why people are upset about this card, because... Yeah. It, everyone, no one likes to be counterspelled, but like to be counterspelled and then have them take your mana is harsh. It is a, it puts, it is a huge disadvantage to say the least. Well, yeah. and like every time I like to do that, I I aim this at Cyprus. Overloaded Cyprus, go into my turn with seven mana. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Feels good. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be mad about that at all. Yeah. So, um, the next one we have. You had experience with salting someone with us. Yeah, or this, one of your brothers did. This yeah. one was a good one. We we did definitely see somebody get upset about this card. Here's my th- oh well okay it's Blood Moon. It um, is Blood Moon, yeah. Which is two and a red, and it makes all non basic lands mountains. First off, but it's hilarious. It is funny, but also it's interactable. Yeah, and it's not like you're losing your mana it's not like we ended before. with back to basics i was just gonna say yeah. we ended with back to basics on the last episode which uh, makes it so that your non-basic lands do not tap it's yeah you cannot it's use rough. them whereas this like sure they're not what you want they're not the color fixing that you're looking for but they're still usable mana you in, just have to look at them as colorless in honesty i didn't i've never really seen a problem with this card just like i didn't see a problem with iona because same. To me, to me, it comes as a, it's a politics tool now. It's a, hey, if you can get rid of this, I can help you late game. I won't swing at you late game. It, it's a chance to interact. That's EDH is about that interaction, right? You shouldn't be trying to solve every problem on your own unless you're playing on your own. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, is like, for me, at least, so many decks, if you are if you have non-basics, you, you're in a multicolor deck. So many multicolor decks might have a little splash of red. And if they don't, like, you should have options for enchantment destruction. You should have, um, you should have ways to deal with a card like this. It's not 
that powerful. It's not hexproof. It's not indestructible. It's not anything that makes it a huge issue. It's just annoying. But what's the one thing that we always say? What? People don't typically run they so don't. much removal. Well, they should. <laughs> they, they, they should really run should. more. You, should, and the other you thing, should have an answer to your problem. I think I try to at least have like three enchantment or artifact removals per deck. Yeah. It's a good thing to you have. You should have an answer to your problem. The other thing too is if you're seeing cards like this and they're wrecking your play style, don't get upset. Don't pick up and leave. Take it as an experience to learn. There is obviously an issue in your deck. If one enchantment can just destroy your deck, it's... Time, time to, to reevaluate. Yeah, exactly. Time to relook at it. And there's going to be nothing wrong with that. You're going to just come out with a better deck overall, I'd say. Yeah. I, I, I think that any of these salt cards, for the most part, are with the exception of things like, I don't know, like stasis. You know. Um, Stacks. <laughs> well, you, uh, you, it, it's an opportunity to like think about how you can build better, you know? In honesty as well, cards like this are a bulwark against like people who come out with a lot of expensive stuff. Like, they come out, they have dual lands, everything like that. You're at least able to slow them down a little bit. You're, mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're some of these salty cards are needed to compete against some of the deck styles that rely yeah. on things. And you're also hilariously coming out with a mono red deck or something. Yeah. And just absolutely annihilating. So funny. You just really want to wreck my dread presence so I can never <laughs> land false so swamps. So funny. And we and we always mention that there's there's not one deck that beats all decks. Yeah, like, that's no. my favorite part about Magic. I have decks that stomp tables and then just lose to just silly things. Yeah, there there's just there's no there's, there's no, no be all. Yes, exactly. There are like sure there's like tiers, but like I've had you can have like a super like highly competitive deck that like just doesn't have a way to deal with a, what you would consider one of the, like a five. Yeah, one of the people that plays mostly competitive in our in our play group when he sits down and plays with us he plays a Corvold deck and he mm. just doesn't really have answers to a lot of the not competitive kind of things if somebody removes a combo yeah. piece he can't deal with the one one weenies that are swinging at him because yeah. and... it doesn't happen in competitive yeah so like looking at it like you're not prepared for that because it's not your meta you know and again like you can adjust to your meta so mm -hmm. speaking of competitive do we have a competitive card next do we <laughs> number one this is one of my favorite Can cards I get a... in Magic. One of my absolute favorite cards, and I have a collection of them. It's true. It's I have a lot of these. It's it food chain, and I also have the Judge promo. Oh, the Judge yeah, promo! The judge I think is the so nicest nice. art in Magic. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. It's real nice. I would but highly recommend looking it up. Food chain is two and a green for an enchantment. Remove a creature you control from the game. Add X mana of any color to your pool, where X is the remove creature CMC plus one. You can only use it for creature spells. Yeah. So it is like a CEDH finisher when you yeah. want your commander to continuously come out. You cast something like a Squee where you can cast him from exile and you exile him. He's three mana. He comes back, but he gives you four. You cast him. You just. Yeah. And you just continue. Yeah, you net do it. infinite mana. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Food chain is a. You don't really see it unless it's for that play style. Yeah. It, it is. I, I have. Never seen it outside of competitive yeah, play. Yeah, I've never seen it played casually. the exception of a Prime Speaker Vanifer deck. The the only time I've ever seen it played is when you're playing your... Um, Prosh, yeah. 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 That's the only time. Um, the next card as well is another CEDH staple for everyone. It's Protean Hulk. Too bad its second part got, <laughs> well, got removed and banned. Yeah, Flash was such a... It, they had to answer it somehow, but Protean Hulk's five green green. When it dies, you can search your... It's a 6-6 six, six as well. It's it's a creature. Uh, when it dies, search your library for any number of creatures with total CMC 6 or less and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So it's another combo piece that's used to fetch your win. Yep. Yeah. So the next one is one that, uh, from listening for the, to the first part, um, anything to do with this type of style of play salts most people. It's pretty brutal. Yeah, this one's pretty... Not nice. And this would be Tectonic Breach. It is X and red, red. It is a sorcery. And each player sacrifices X lands. Let's recognize that it's a sacrifice. That feels bad. That yeah. hurts. And you yourself have to, oh, uh, which land do I? For a lot of people, you'd play this in a, not not that I would give anyone ideas of how Did to. Do you have like a smothering tide or something? Or? How to wreck your. Uh, Brian. <laughs> how to wreck your play group. But uh, this is generally in a Clothis deck. Where you run things like Storm Cauldron, which is whenever you tap a land, you pick it up. Oh, nice. And so you, you have no lands. You wait till people are tapped out. 
you get that into play, you tap it all, and then you play something like uh, Mana Bond, where you just discard your hand at the end step and put all your lands I... back into play. And uh, then no one likes to play with you. So everyone just stands up and walks away. <laughs> Brian writing down the cards yeah. that oh, he needs yeah. for this. He's like, aha, ma- what, mana bond. <laughs> what did you, which commander did you say this? I really want to, I really want to <laughs> like just talk about that. Like I wanted to make Clothis so bad because I think it's such a cool design. I know you got it. You got the card and you're I just like, I have both. I, I have must. the constellation and I have the normal one. And I was like, this is like a cool thing. And I started, I, both. I started, well, I like them. I have a huge i started putting uh i started putting the deck together and i was like there's no way anyone's gonna play with this like no it's just gonna upset people i was like it's time to shelve this until Uh, someone i hate comes i feel like there's just like no way to play that i just not be the i I bring that a full counterspell deck and then like massacre girl for my decks for the night ew oh i wouldn't play with you i would just be like yeah good game and i'd get up and walk away i start getting emails hey the store's closed tonight (laughs) (laughs) you see daniel sitting he has all three of his decks lined up and he just plays one hand sits into the next chair plays the next hand sits you know what that's not true i would go sit down and play with him oh thanks i I I couldn't i love that and tell him he's special i love him Uh, this next one i don't actually know why it's a salt card Uh, yeah because you can cheat it out but I, my thing is, I think its cost justifies it. Enchantments are significantly so, harder to cheat out than... So, so do I. I think I also think that, but I think that's... I'm not saying that oh, I no. stand by the, the decision for it to be salty. I'm saying that I understand why other people might have it. The, yeah, omniscience. The only, time, the only time that I've seen this played, so it's omniscience, it's yeah. seven, blue, 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 is... When I've every, lost already. Well, no, every, every, <laughs> everyone that I've played against hard casts it. Yeah. yeah. Like I've never seen it get cheated out. Okay, maybe maybe yeah. once. Yeah, but um, seven but, mana and three blue. Yeah, so ten total. So this is um, an enchantment, and it reads: you may cast from your hand. Uh, sorry, you can cast spells from your hand without paying their mana cost. So yay, everything is free. But a, a, another thing to consider is that ten mana is a lot. Yes. Yep. Ten mana should have a big effect. Yeah. You know, like if you think of things that are like. I complain about Psychriff because it's seven mana and it's a full board reset. This is three turns past that. It's not it's, a full board reset. It's a full board reset for everyone else. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's a 75% board reset, I should say. Yes. Yep. And then you swing and you take yeah. the win. Um, This is a good one. But good it, man. <laughs> in general, like, again, you have to have so many other pieces to make this work. It, it can't really interact with your commander because it's not generating you mana. And it's not drawing you cards. So at a certain point, you're going to run out. You have to have already generated the ability to have a full hand. Like, yeah. No max hand size. Yeah. All these cards. Yeah. yeah. And, and again, it can't interact with your commander. You can't cast your commander with Omniscience. No. Let mana drain someone's 12 casting commander because yeah. you've killed it so many times. And like, oh, I can play this and still have two mana left over. Contamination is the next one. And I understand entirely why Contamination is on the I've list. I've only heard rumors of this card of people going, <laughs> heard, contaminate the board. I've heard <laughs> Contamination tell. is, again, it's another card that a lot of competitive players play because they're bad people. This is but a, it's hilarious. This is also I'm, like, I'm this uh, bad people. This is also, again, another moment, another instance of Urza Saga coming back yeah, to haunt us. I was going to say, like, Urza Saga is just the Urza list. Saga was a nasty, Urza, nasty set. Urza Saga is amazing. I love that set. Yeah, it's a good set. This is an enchantment for two and uh, black. So let's keep in mind that Xur the Enchanter can fetch this out when he swings. Xur the Enchanter. During your upkeep, sack a creature or sack contamination. <laughs> Whenever a land is tapped for mana, it produces one black instead of its normal type and amount. Oh, I need this. Yeah. It, it is no. brutal. <laughs> what, well, for Yogmoth? Yeah, in, yeah. in yeah. Yogmoth, you're already sacking creatures anyways. Yeah. It's uh, I mean, I would love to see you put it in Yawgmoth. I think that'd be hilarious. It's really good in Marin too. Oh, it's the one that searches, right? Yeah, because yeah, I need to sack anyways. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. It's a really good one, and it locks a lot of people out of the game if they don't have. That would block. be hilarious. Yeah, it's well, and the the my favorite part about it is it's not just type, it's amount. So like, if you're playing against like a group hug. <laughs> Kind of thing, like anyone who's played with my Kenrith deck or yeah. seen me stream all, with yeah. it. Yeah, all of a sudden, every I like to mana. Ha- is yeah, I like to have great. Heartbeat of Spring out, Mana yeah. Flare, all that stuff. This doesn't care. This makes it all tap for one black. <laughs> would would this override say someone something like the Dryad of the Elysian Grove, yes. where it yes can, they can use it for any color? Yeah, because it's type they, and amount. It, well, and it's the, it would be the same with Chromatic Lantern because 
you can tap it for any color. But when it's tapped for mana, it produces that instead. It's so dead. it replaces it. Oh. Yeah, it is a replacement effect. It's a really cool card. Saltier decks coming to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Courtesy of uh, e- EDA trick. <laughs> yeah. Contamination. Really, really just put your play group in a good mood. <laughs> Ew. Drop it on turn two and let's just get it going. Oh, we haven't even. Oh, so this has a salt score of 1.97. Yeah, is this... that a five? No, I, I think two or I think three is the top. I don't okay, know. So, so it's half. Yeah, these there. these get less salty. We started at the saltiest last week. That it, card will add great flavor. Yeah, these are all. <laughs> yeah, these are all now just better cards, like possessed portal, an eight cost artifact. If a player would draw a card, they skip that draw instead. <laughs> at the beginning of each turn, each player sacks a permanent unless they discard a card from their hand. How do you get oh. cards then? You don't. You have to wait till the possessed portal player sacks the possessed portal or destroy it. A. Hey. <laughs> a great discard deck card. Oh, so that, that would be oh perfect in tiny bones. Yeah, it would be. <clears throat> um, don't the, make that face at me. The next one, I don't think it, it's the best oh. meme card. This is Brian in a nutshell. How, how? Why is this on here? So the one that I'm kind of surprised about is Ristic Study. So two and a blue. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays one. So what? Are, are people just getting salty that? I was gonna say they're salty. The yeah, they're salty. Yeah, I don't think the... they're salty about the card. I think they're salty about the player. Yeah, the fact that you suddenly start playing with a parrot. So yeah. since when did annoyance become? <laughs> well, I, uh, I I was just gonna note that this did get reprinted in Jumpstart, and I was playing Jumpstart with uh, my boss, and he pulled the Ristic Study, and as soon as he played it, and I was I was like, "Don't ask me. I'm never gonna pay it. Just draw the card. Don't. I don't want to hear it." Ever take your Thank bribe you. and leave. Did, and did Just take the win. Printed in double masters too. No, no. Okay. No, no, no. I I love this card. Like I I actually just picked up two heavily played ones for I think six dollars a piece. Yeah. What the hell? Heavily played binder. No, get in there, guys. Oh, I love it. I love a super used card. Yeah, we all. The play more in damage, threes. the better. I want the cheaper card. Yeah. The dog dish special, as I call it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to look like somebody ran over it with a lawnmower. Oh. Maybe not quite. Give it to me cheap, baby. <laughs> I got to tape it back together. <laughs> the next one is pretty pretty mean. Uh, it's Global Rune. Four and a white for a sorcery. Each player chooses from the lands he or she controls a land of each basic land type, then sacrifices the rest. Oof. Again, land sacrifice? Here's the, here's the problem, though. Everyone wants to complain that white's so weak, but there's a whole lot of white cards on the salt list. Like, yeah. Yeah, they gain you some life, they destroy your lands, get over it. Yeah, like, what do you people want? I'm like, yeah. this is what white used to be. Like, this is just, what white cards were. Yeah, we just don't be, want Just this. be happy that you get three mana one ones for some reason. Yeah, like, so, I, I just feel like you don't want to go back to this. Then I'll be making a mono white life gain land destruction deck. Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, land destruction tribal. <laughs> this next card was actually pretty pricey for a little bit. It was around 25 bucks for a commander. Hmm. And it was a really good salt commander. I, there's no other reason to play it unless you want to salt your friends. Like, th- this is just a flat salt commander. Unless you're me. No, it's it's unless a, you're me. I've never had an issue with it. That's yeah, because of the kind here. of That's true. That's true. Uh, Brian, you would not like this one. No, I, I I definitely liked it that one time you were playing. Oh and yeah, then you decided to pick up. I uh, I made this deck as a joke. Well, well we should t- say what it does. Yeah, really quickly. So I made a Gaddock Teague deck as a joke. And uh, I was playing against someone who was trying to play the... What does Gaddock Teague do? One second. First, (laughs) they're trying to play uh, Angie Falconrath, and someone was trying to play Alesha. And I made it just like a full annoying deck. So, like, I made it so... uh, Turn two or three, I put out Linvala. So no one one could have activated abilities. Like, it was... It's pretty rough, and Brian was just playing like generic zombie beaters. So he yeah. was playing my scarab. So, deck. Yeah, Brian's over here just like. Doo, 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 yeah, doo, he doo, didn't bam, care about bam. this, but his ability is non creature spells with CMC four or greater cannot be cast, and non creature spells with X in their cost also can't be cast. So yeah. if you're playing a creature heavy deck, you do not care. I had no problems with that card coming out. I was set to win the game, and then Daniel's like, do you know what, guys? Like, yeah, I stopped this playing. I was just like, I was like, yeah, I'm just being annoyed. I'm sorry, guys. And yeah, I everyone salted. kills Brian. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, then Brian got gangbanged. But my fa- my fa- <laughs> my absolute favorite thing about this uh, commander is that it is the greatest ally to my dragons. True. It is probably the only 
the only kind of deck that, other than like a super intense group hug that can sit down at a table and be my greatest friend. Yep. I will protect them with all of my dragon fire <laughs> with all your until dragon the day might. I die. <laughs> until uh, you can finish them off. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you take the next one here, Brian. So this one is called Epicenter. It is four and a red and it's a sorcery. And you know what? It is target player sacrifices a land. That doesn't sound so bad for five. That's not so bad. Yeah. But then it has Threshold. And you know what? I think they should really come back because Thresholds are really neat. I love Um, Threshold. Yeah. yeah. So Threshold is uh, you have Threshold if if seven or more cards are in your graveyard. And this Threshold ability is all players sacrifice all lands instead. (laughs) Ouch. Yeah, I just want to make a white red deck, yeah. play this, and then Teferi's protection away. <laughs> True. <laughs> See that with like- that on this deck, I will tap three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next one I also don't really understand yeah. as a salt card. Um, I personally think that uh, Gaius Cradle has some downfalls. Number one is it cannot produce mana without a creature. Yeah. So yeah, a board of white makes it absolutely useless. It is not a good turn one unless you're dropping like a Memnite or something like that, or yeah. an Maybe people are just salty about the price. No, no. I, I, the problem is that it does get out of control. Like it's generally in like an elf deck, a token. I understand the point. Why, like, why people could be upset, and it is, it is a price thing. If it was more accessible, I think it would be a little bit better, but. Like, I, I do think that it, at least out of the strong lands, has a downside. Like, Itlamok does the same thing once it's flipped. Yeah. But still taps for a forest as well. Yeah. Exactly. But Itlamok it, it has the, has the, um, the, the, you have to have creatures on the board. Yeah. It has the precedence to that you, flip. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's still a good card. I, I don't really understand the super salt of it, but. Yeah. Neither do I. Um, but that's okay. We didn't vote on these. Yeah, so. well, and like I said uh, last last week, um, just because something isn't necessarily a problem in our meta doesn't mean that's not a problem in somebody else's. Yeah, that's maybe maybe Gaius Cradle is just running rampant. Maybe, like, we we don't know, so. Uh, impending Disaster is one and a red for an <laughs> enchantment. During your upkeep, <laughs> if there's seven or more lands in play, sacrifice it and destroy all lands. So, I guess, like, with this... We're seeing a lot of land destruction cards, and like I'm kind of surprised that they're this far down. Oh, they were they were up there on the list yeah. too. The whole oh, yeah. list is land destruction, basically. Yeah, like I, I would most likely see that anything land destruction. But like would I, be I'm like surprised that it's not like above yeah. uh, omniscience or guy's cradle. Yeah, yeah, true. Like weird. guy's cradle would just be gone with this. Weird, weird flex. Um, fierce guardianship is next, and. Yeah. Fierce Guardianship that's is a, a very strong card. Very new. I'm surprised yeah, that it's on this list that's already. already. That's the that's uh, the. F- I'm not because of how strong it is. Yeah. Well, it's just it's just fast for it to be. It, well, it's uh, a free it's counter free. spell. Yeah. yeah. If you control your commander, so if you don't, it's two and a blue to counter target non creature spell. But if you control your commander, you don't have to pay that. So it's a zero cost protect counter non- something target yeah. non creature spell. Yeah. It's it's a pretty good card. That's, I that's I, so I do good. understand. I'm hoping that that gets a reprint. It desperately needs one. That would be amazing because like you just paying buying all the commander. Like that's why the that one deck went up to like what 60, 70 bucks. Oh, Seventy five. Yeah, they all yeah. went up. Yeah. I uh, I'm hoping that we see a lot of these in Commander Legends. Yeah, that yeah. would be. Awesome. I would love to see the whole cycle of the free spells. I just want to crack arcane signets and stuff too. Yeah. Like in in actual boosters. Like give me. Give me somewhere I can open soul rings. I'll be happy. Trust me. Yo, opening soul rings would be awesome. Because they can't put in a standard set. Wizards just sent Daniel arcane signets because apparently he does not have enough. No, I have like five. <laughs> that out, outside of the ones that came in commander decks or like the other decks, I've only been able to find four or five in months. Yeah. I like I just that. found one the other day and I was so excited. Yeah. Some Basically, you find them when somebody like trades in a collection. Yeah. Other than that, it's they just... They don't get traded. Like no, why? Com- cards that go to commander players are lost to the abyss. Yeah, they stay with commander players. Yeah. We don't trade in cards like that. Um, the next one's Ruination. And what? I can only assume what it does. Yeah, let's take a guess. It's three and a red. Any, ruin, any guesses? Ruin. Destroy all non basic lands. So, not as bad. Not as bad, but still Not as bad if you're playing mono red. Yeah. <laughs> not bad if you're playing mono blue. Not True. bad if you're playing mono anything. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I would run any. 
Catches. If you're playing mono blue and casting ruination, you're cheating. No, no, I mean like if you're playing. I understand, Hope. You not meant if, not if your if, opponent. N- not if they have a blood moon, and you cast it, it from will their if it hand never somehow. Rains. <laughs> Sire. <laughs> Sire of Insanity is the next card. Uh, it is a demon, four and Rakdos, uh, for a six-four at the beginning of each end step. At the beginning of each end step, each player discards their hand. Each. Amazing. That's that's pretty good. Dare I say. Everyone loses their hand every turn. So I can't remember if this was brought up in the in the part one. But like I'm surprised that we haven't seen or the oh the one that has like the three triggers on it that you go down to five life or three life or you get or every Havoc other festival? Yeah. Was it on the earlier list? Is it, is it Hav- Havoc Festival? No, the Havoc Festival brutality? is you lose, Yeah, widespread brutality. No, 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 no. Um, yeah. So it's the one where every player gets seven zombies. Yeah, you, you choose one of each and then you yeah. lose on the final one or something. Yeah, or, yeah that's, I think that's widespread brutality, isn't it? I thought so. Okay. I, it could be. We don't know the card. Yeah. We'll see if it's on this but list. I'm just like, I can't believe it's not higher up there because usually when you play it, everyone's just like, mm, people or don't at least really, the one player. I don't think that people really play Rakdos that much. Yeah, only only against it. <laughs> it's not a widespread brutality. I don't know what it is. It is, is not. But I know what it looks like. Yeah, it's it's stained in our brains. Yeah. Because it's just like, oh, don't cast that on me. Uh, the next one. I know it was mythic. The next one is a really hard one to get around as a commander. Um, it's a reserve list card. It's also Urza Saga. Because Love Urza Saga. Because of course is. it is. Uh, it's Gilded Drake, and it's uh, colorless and a blue. For a flying 3-3, three, three, which is pretty good stats. Yeah. Yep. When it comes two. into play, you exchange control of it for target creature one of your opponent's control, or you sacrifice it. So it, it is really, really strong. It's really good for taking a commander away from someone. Yeah, it's a two-drop, so you can take whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was playing against someone that had... It was either this card or something close to it. They would play it. They would take one of my cards, and then they would bounce... Uh, they would return. Bounce the Drake, yep. Yeah, and then play it again, take something else to mind. I was just like, oh. Okay. That's basically what a rune yeah. deck does. Well, and that's why it's so brutal. It's because it's not until it leaves the battlefield. It's not, there's no parameter. It's just, they you just take get it, it on it. It is a very expensive card, so you don't see it too, too much. It's yeah. $210, basically. Ish. You take yeah. and you take and you take, but you never give back. True. <laughs> um, Overwhelming Splendor is a one player humility. We talked about that one last. Uh, Last episode, but Love it's a me curse. Humility. We it's know six white white, which is pricey. Brian, I'm getting called out. Also, Brian, <laughs> I love humility. Creatures enchanted player <laughs> controls lose all abilities and have base power toughness one one, but it also tacks on enchanted player can't activate abilities that aren't mana abilities or loyalty abilities. Amazing. It's yeah. really good. So yeah, so it's a humility and a limbala all in one. Yep, it's it's pretty that, strong. That sounds great. Oh. This next one, let me tell you, I got a bone to pick with this one. I'm not a fan of this card. I hate this card. Really? This card would be way higher. Yeah, I hate it. I, I don't think it's fun at all. I love this card. So, so but you don't I think, think it should be rated 1.85? But I think no. that... Uh, so the next one on the list is Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. Why don't I read what it does? Five and white white for a four seven. Pretty pretty beefy body. It's the White Predator. It's, um, she's got cool lore, but other than that... Vigilance. Well, she does. Um, other creatures you control get 2-2. Two, two. And Anthem, that's pretty strong. Pretty cool. Creatures your opponents control get minus 2, minus 2. Amazing. That's brutal. And let me tell you, when you're sitting at a table and everybody copies the Elish Norn and all of your creatures get minus 6, minus 6, and you can't play anything. We we're, were playing a game and uh, I had an Elish Norn out. Matt had an Elish Norn out. And I then, will made a copy and of Elish Norn. And made a copy so there's three on the field. Ours were just like... I all, was playing a Toll Smear deck. Uh, yeah, all we're hopes, just trying to have fun. All hopes wolves are minus wolves. six. That would that would kill all the dragons too. Almost, yeah. almost. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. except like Dromoka. <laughs> and <laughs> I want to make a white blue deck, which is a whole bunch of <laughs> copies. Sakashima Elish Norn Tribal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helm of the Host right up on it. Oh. Don't look at me that way. Uh, you deserve it. <laughs> I'm into it. I, I think that's a it's good one. It's just like that comment about like, why would you make Vorinclex your commander? Well, who hurt you? <laughs> this is Brian thinking, oh, should I make an Elish Norn deck? No, you shouldn't. No, no, not an Elish Norn deck. 
A but Sakushima deck. Yeah, there you go. Oh, but you can't do that. The, uh, Sakushima's blue. Sakushima's Sak- fun. We need to do a Sakushima. Sak- Sakushima, more Sak- like it. <laughs> um, the next one's Thrasios <laughs> Triton Hero. It's, it's just the boogie, It's the boogeyman of CEDH. Yeah. Everyone thinks it's a like super good. It's not a bad competitive full commander. Skill. I don't think it's the tier one thing that everyone makes it up. It's not, it's not bad. It has a mana sink, which is cool. Uh, it's a merfolk wizard. It has partner, and partner is a great mechanic. I love it. I've spoken many times about how much I love it. Partner with, I think, is a little more reasonable. Yes. Partner was a little too broad, a little too powerful. Yeah, well, because yeah. you could mix and match. Yeah, so much. Which and I do kind of like that. I, I oh, liked though. it too, but it just it led to unintended consequences. And a lot of the time, these partners, like uh, you see Thrasios and Timna the Weaver. Yes. And a lot of people play Timna only for the color access, right? Yeah. Like it's not often the deck plan. Um, but Thrasios is a 1-3 Merfolk Wizard for 2 mana, Simic, which is a really, really good... 1-3 for 2 is a good body, and it has 4, scry 1, then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it in the battlefield tapped, otherwise draw a card. Mm-hmm. So you can basically not only get all of your lands into play, but you can draw your whole deck if you have an infinite mana generation. Mm-hmm. It, it's a pretty good one. The next one, I do understand why people are super mad about this has been on the salt list for years, ever since it came out. It's made for Commander. Uh, it's Derevi, Imperial Tactician. It is Bant Colors, which is green, green white, white blue. blue. Bant's so much fun. It's I love Bant. It's a flying 2-3. When it enters or a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you can tap or untap target permanent. And that's pretty good. But Derevi also has an ability where you can pay four as an ability put him onto the battlefield from the command zone. So, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so, so he gets somebody... around the commander tax always. Yeah. And Amazing. when he enters, he can tap or untap permanent. So you can put him in at instant speed. So you, you have a commander that is better than Flash. Yeah. I really like that, actually. I might yeah. Have to go and find Derevi's one. really, really cool. I will let Brian read the next one on the salt list. Oh, it's my boy Tulane. I think this is relative, right? Yeah, yeah. So... Well, Tulane is, I, I believe Tulane is a good, he's hes a good competitive slash intro to competitive. He, he's, we talked about slash it in the. Slash casual. Yeah, we, we talked about it in the, in the episode. episode. He's a really good, like, d- uh, deck to Go teach. Go check it out, we did that. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can <laughs> teach people a lot about stacks, triggers, priority, but he just has great abilities built in. He's very, very versatile. Yep. Tulane is an amazing commander. Yeah. So I, I is also in bank colors. I do think like obviously this is on the list because of Frilled Mystic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so Tulane is a two colorless green, white, and blue Bant legendary creature human druid. Uh, vigilance. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So Pay good. Pay three and aggro tap ramp. It. And return creature you control to its owner's hand. So I've actually been like constantly upgrading my two lane deck. So now I believe the average CMC is two point like two point five so almost. So it's so easy to cast. Yeah. So I'm just able to constantly like I, I think I dropped down to thirty one lands. So I'm just able to keep that creatures coming out, getting that free card draw. If it's not a land, if it is a land, then great. It just allows me to continue going. But then I can abuse the fly or the the lion. Um, yeah, the protection white mane. Yeah, white mane lion and um, the the drake for one. Just keep bouncing them. Frilled mystic, exactly that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, and the counter spells, and then pay three, bring it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tulane is a very versatile and very strong commander. Um, I personally think it's the strongest from the Brawl set. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like it's uh, Corvold was like an instant CDH one, but Corvold outside of competitive play is is okay. I I was just going to say like Corvold is good in that context. Yeah, Corvold's good with food chain. Yeah. Yeah. But short of that, like Tulane is versatile. I have a Corvold deck. It is not good. It is bad and I've never enjoyed playing it because it just doesn't. It, it's meant to be a competitive deck, and I wanted to build it as a fun sacrifice deck, and it just doesn't work very it's well. Stupid. It's probably one of my worst decks I've built. It's like the worst Jund build that you could build. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it it is not king of the Jundgle. <laughs> the Jundgle. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's my boy Carthus. The next one is Teferi, Master of Time, and again, this is a new one. 
he's got he's got some pretty cool abilities. Thirty five different artworks. Yep. yep, that's true. Yep, that's ac- much. that's exactly accurate. I counted. So it's two blue blue for a planeswalker that starts at three loyalty. You can activate loyalty abilities of him on any player's turn anytime you could cast an instant. So in a four player pod, like you can cast him. He's up to seven. Yeah, by the he's time up you to get seven on the first turn. one. He needs to if be no answered. His plus one draw card, discard a card, is great. Uh, just awesome. it's basically you're looting. Minus three target creature you don't control phases out. So really good protection. I always say that having protection on a planeswalker is very strong and that you should judge them by their first two. See what they are. Those are worth inclusion. And it's it's nice to know that somebody tries to hit it. You just do that on yeah, exactly. their you turn. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But it's minus 10 is where it really shines because you take two extra turns after this one. Yeah. Not one, not two. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I, I, just, I was going to say, like I was going to say four with Rings of Bright Hearth. <laughs> just do not, I do not enjoy cards that allow extra turns. But also, like, consider, like, if you had a chain veil hey, Brian, also. Yeah. Remember what I was like, you're not going to like the deck I'm making? Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about it, but there might be a few extra turns in it. It'll be interesting, though. No. Uh, um, This one. Is my I actually have the oh, go ahead. No, sorry. you finish. Go ahead. No, go for it. no, please after you. No, I was gonna talk about this, but you clearly oh, go ahead. To say no. Oh, I was just gonna say that I uh, I don't really have an issue with this card because it's kind of a game ender. So. Yeah. So I was actually gonna say the same thing. Oh I, yeah, get out of my head. I feel <laughs> the opposite. I feel about Cyclonic Rift with this. I hate Cyclonic Rift. Because I've made it's that slow. clear. It yeah, a lot of time it's that nobody casts Crater Hoof unless they're trying to kill the table. Yeah. They're giving it a valiant attempt. They've done and some... And if it gets countered, fine. They've done some math in their head, and they know the Triumph of the Hordes is going to go on top. That's... They've done the math in their head. Yeah. No, they haven't. They've done it outward, out loud. Uh, how many blockers do you have? How, yeah. What's your life? Yeah. Okay. I have uh, 85 plant tokens. Uh, 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 what's your life? Crater Hoof <laughs> is a 5-5 five, five beast with haste. And it's, for eight mana. Yeah, five and three big green. Big boy mana cost. But it's green. Who yep. cares? When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get XX until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. Yes. This I, is possibly one of the strongest ETB effects in green. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why it's on this list at all. Yeah. I, to, I, have, I have no idea. Unless people are salty because they lost. Well, the my guy my, wanted to win. My other thing is like I the Paradox Engine ban is a good example of another thing like this. The crater hoof doesn't function by itself. You can't cast crater hoof and win. It's not an eight mana win the game. No. You need to have something else. State. Yeah, you have to have a board state set up. You have to have other things. Like you can't just have like you can't have an Atraxa and a crater hoof and like just and win. Yeah, this is <laughs> my creatures get plus two plus two. plus two plus two and trample. <laughs> yeah, like it's you have <laughs> to have it set up. People can respond and you can wipe the board in response to it on the stack. And it's yeah. hilarious. That is hilarious. But yeah, like I. The game has to end. That's so funny what's under it. <laughs> as the next card. Yeah, we'll let you read that one. Oh, wow. Right under it as well. Wow, what a call out. Do you see what's under that one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So all, all these cards just <laughs> seem to be going so together. Funny. But we're, we're, yeah, we're going we're going one at a time on the list. and We just scroll to the next one, and it's Atraxa. That is amazing. I uh, the girl's on here. She's famous. She's perfect. I love her. She's beautiful, and, and she's perfect, and I have nothing bad to say about her next. <laughs> Uh, attractive. <laughs> she's, she's, she's a four cost she four four. She, she's well, a literal she, angel. She's a literal angel. Uh, she's a four cost four four. Um, so, but it's uh, one green, one white, blue, and um, black. A black. Um, and she also has cool lore. Uh, so she's got flying, vigilance, death touch, and lifelink. Very cool. And at the beginning of your end step, prolive the rate. Prolive the rate is cool. So it's pretty sweet because you can get really big, really hard. You can build the deck with one ones. You can build it with Infect. You can build it with Super Friends. Very you versatile. Can, yeah, like she gives you lots of options, especially with all of the support that Proliferation has gotten in the last like mm-hmm. year or two. Kinda, this like, is generally the play Planeswalkers deck. That's what most people use. It for. I don't because I'm not a bad person, but you can. Most people do. You can Super Friends that mofo it's uh pretty strong no matter how you build it though flying vigilance death touch lifelink is strong yeah abilities. i go with hard commander damage and that's it's a four 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 yeah it has all uh, those abilities yeah it's diff- it's a little bit difficult to play because of the specific colors that you need like you have yeah. to get really lucky early game to be able to get her out at a good time but yeah. you know you can also just build up your board otherwise like it's not, not a big deal 
What, um, I, what I was laughing about was the card right under it, though. Yeah, that Tri- we definitely were talking about. Triumph of the Hordes. Two green green until end of turn creatures you control get 1-1, one, one, trample, and infect. And again, I don't mind it. It's meant to end the game. I got my booty smacked with it. Yeah, it, it happens. Sometimes it'd be like that. I think we've all gotten our booty smacked well, with it. this was last stream that we did uh, after... Um, Oh, Riku, Riku for real on Instagram. Oh yeah, he did. He for went hard. Real. He yeah. he tried. He was Pathbreaker Ebex with Triumph of the Hordes. Oh yeah, he, he came strong. Yeah, what the Savala deck? Yeah, that was that was really nice. Yeah, it was really good. Pathbreaker Ebex, so good. Um, but yeah, it's I understand why this is salty. People don't like the Infect because it's so easy to kill with Infect. But there's so little support for Infect. Like there's lots of proliferation, but Generally, infect isn't really a viable strategy. You get mass targeted immediately, oh, and one hundred percent. Yeah, like even like if you have one thing, Brian's Yogmoth deck had a infect thing, and just trying to proliferate it makes everyone swing at you. Yeah, well, uh, something rats. Um, yeah, and yeah, something rats. Icar rats. Maybe? Yeah, Icar rats, and it puts a poison counter on every single player, and then you can with Yogmoth you could proli- proliferate. Um, the the poison counters. So as soon as I started doing that, I think I got up to four before everyone wanted to kill me. It was not a fun time. Yeah, that well, that's actually one of the things um, with regards to impact. Sorry, um, that we talked about how I I oh I still think that it should be um, a higher count uh, for yeah. not ten to kill you. Yeah, I think it should be twenty. Uh, but I understand. Are we boring you, Hope? Yeah. You are. <laughs> Take a breath if you're yawning. No, I can't. I don't know. I just, I'm a... I get know, it. It's I'm, early. A, I'm just a sleepy girl at any given time. Um, it doesn't matter what time of day, early or not. Um, anyways, uh, just because I think that it should be 20. But the thing about Infect, I think the reason that it hasn't really been affected too much um, and nobody's really changed the rules is because A, it's not super played. But B... Um, but whenever you do hear someone that goes, oh, let me play my infect, everyone everybody groans. targets them, and that's. Ugh. But yep. everybody targets them. Yep. They die. I so, don't want minus one, minus one counters on my boys. Let me just quickly slot in Sun Cleanser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the card that's good for nothing else. I hate it. I love Sun Cleanser. Um, it's so annoying. Force of Will is the next one. Great card. Sweet, sweet reprint. Am I right? Five Babies. mana instant. You can pay one life and exile a blue from your hand rather than paying its cost. Counter target spell, a very very classic strong counter spell. So classic. It is a classic one. It's it's very old. It's very good though. Still sits so at around a hundred dollars. Um, you still have wow. to have more. Kind of surprising. More in Canada. Just for the base one. Yeah. I don't think it was a hundred. I would be no. wrong. I don't work at a store, so I have no. Yeah, if I we just got one the other day and it was two hundred dollars. I think the Oof. reason is which artwork. This one. No. Oh. Oof. People like Therese Nielsen's art. I think the reason is because it's not going to be printed in that artwork. Again. That's fair. That's yeah, that's very is. true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next one is a card that goes with uh, Solemnity. Obviously, Solemnity is uh, things can't have counters put on them. Decree of Silence is the other side of the combo, and it's on the salt list. Six blue blue for enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a spell, counter it and put a depletion counter on Decree of Silence. If there's three or more counters on it, sack it. And then you can cycle it for six, and if you do, you counter a spell. I would be instantly scooping I'll, if I saw Solemnity in this card. A lot of people yeah. do stuff like that, but uh, everyone just needs to start running Boseju in every deck. Boseju who shelters all. Pay two life for a mana, a colorless mana if it's used for instant or sorcery. Can't be countered. Huh. Interesting. I guess and if show you have them Divinity un- or yeah, Destiny Spinner, Divinity Spinner. Yeah. Show um, them an uncounterable. Yeah, and Destiny Spinner is really good. Just bust Allosaurus Shepherd out. That's all you need. Green spells can't be countered. Yep. Hell that yeah. song's real strong. Yep. That's song. That true. card. Song. Are you tired? Apparently. Are um, we boring you? The next one's one of Brian's favorite cards. This goes in every single white deck I own. I mean, and, as it should. Yeah, and it's to Furious Protection, it is two and a white, and until your next turn, your life total can't change, and uh, and you have protection from everything. All permanents you control phase out. I for uh, the, uh, and then exiled Furious Protection. So I actually, I guess I start playing this card wrong, 
So I essentially <laughs> said that I phased out, but technically I'm still there. I can still be attacked. Mm -hmm. So, oh, and the way that we figured that out was when we were playing the Mega Bowl, actually. Um, no, it's Fierce Protection, way too much for that budget. Um, yeah, it'd be a different one. But there was a card that forced everyone to attack. Mm -hmm. I, to Fury Protection. So someone's like, oh, I don't have to swing into the guy that has all these blockers that can kill my yeah, stuff. You yeah, just I'll swing, swing into Brian. Brian, Brian takes he no just damage. Ha yeah, he has protection from it. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. So he lucked out with that one. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I was like, technically, I didn't know that I could actually still be targeted. Yeah, yeah. You're still 100% a legal target. You just can't be damaged. You yeah. protect. You can't be targeted either. You have protection from everything. You can be attacked. Sorry, that's what I mean. True. You are a legal target for an attack. That's very true. Yes. Um, the next you can't be targeted, but you are a target. The next is uh, so confusing. No target demographic for only targets. For only targets. <laughs> for a lot of people, uh, the Titans in general are salt Should cards. Be way up there. Ooh, way up there. Ulamog, yeah. the Infinite yeah. Guy, or yep. eleven mana. Expensive. It's eleven 10, mana. 10. Indestructible. Annihilator 4, when you cast it, destroy target permanent. When it's put in the graveyard from anywhere, it's shuffled. Only exile will stop this monstrosity. Anything with Annihilator should be further up this. Disagree. I don't think anything with Annihilator has been on the list. That whole sacrifice lands. Here's the thing. Well, you you have to choose it. Yeah, you choose. And here's the other thing. Run more why exile. Are you getting, why are you getting so sassy over there? Because it's personal. We're about to throw down her. Personal, baby. Because um, you run this monstrosity? Yeah. And? Animar, <laughs> Animar um, baby. Uh, baby. Uh, but here's the thing. Like I said, run more exile. Run removal. I do. Uh, Take that's, care. That's not actually viable advice. That's terrible advice. So, well, that's my attack. Green doesn't have an exile creature. I'm attacking Brian, okay? Yeah. Well, we know Brian's playing white, of course. <laughs> yeah. That's He's protection. fine. Yeah. Um, but my thing... Is that when you play Eldrazi, you're in the exact same position as if you're playing In fact, You are number one target. There's just significantly more support. They're way harder to get rid of. They make everyone sack their board when you swing. You have to get there, though. If somebody... Most times I don't have creatures to sacrifice when these things hit the board. Yeah, but they have to hit the board. There's um someone... Uh, yeah, it's really hard to get them out. There was a theoretical card. Totally doesn't exist. Elvish Piper. Just pay one green to put out. <laughs> um, they, uh, someone made a fake box topper sneak attack. Oh, oh no, those are both real cards. Oh, Where you can get real. them in real easy. I'm just saying that it still has to be done. And the second that I pull out an Animar deck, even if it... Yo, I, I, even if you I feel you. I love Even if somebody's Eldrazi, never seen them. it before, they hey. probably are just going to assume that if it's I an Eldrazi an deck. And I, I just had an get hard one? targeted. If I had an extra one, this would go in the Inet deck. It's an odd mana cost. I would love to cast it, yeah. but I only I only have a finite number of the Titans? infinite <laughs> guyers. Uh, Thank you, Hope. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate it. I understand where you're coming from. I just what, I'm on your side. No, Brian. I like them. Sorry, I was looking at Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is an audio format. Why, you can't tell who I'm looking at. Why are you booing me? I'm right. <laughs> wow. Um, oh, I'm your friend. The next one is Thoughts of Ruin. Two red red, and this is a card that would actually make me have a brain aneurysm because I <laughs> I put draw in every deck. Each player sacks a land for each card in your hand. So for me, I would do it and everyone would have to sack their whole hand or their whole field field of lands because I Daniel, always have 40 this? cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there miming hands. <laughs> <laughs> what are these? <laughs> Wake of Destruction is a salt-looking card. Destroy target land and all lands with the same name as that land. <laughs> Non-basic lands or mountains. Red, Mountain. Red Splinter. Red Splinter. Splinter should be on the list for sure. Splinter should be on the list. But no one knows. No one knows the. No one knows the dark magic. No one knows the dark magic, and I'm not explaining what Splinter is. I'm not bringing that negativity into your play group. We're back into Ulamog town. Ulamog Ugh. again. This is way worse, Ulamog. When you cast an exile two permanents for one less mana? Yeah, this Could is, you imagine? This is BFZ Ulamog. This Ulamog is Mil Milamog. Still indestructible, yeah. Whenever it attacks, defending player exiles the top 20 cards of his or her library. I'm fine with that. I uh, I saw someone who was playing a... Their The whole point of their deck was to have infinite combats. So they had aggravated assault out, like a bunch of mana rocks to ramp up to this. And somebody had put the uh, curse of bounty 
whatever the green curse is, where you untap all non-land permanents every time that player's attack, mm-hmm. they put it on themselves so they could keep casting Angus McKenzie. And he just kept swinging with <laughs> Ulamog and Exile. And, <laughs> and the person just lost their mind. They got so mad they picked up. We didn't play with him for a while. Evan, I love you. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was a really Missy funny game. Sweet Prince. It was, but yeah, an exile the top twenty is pretty is pretty hurt. It's a lot. That but, is a lot of cards, yeah. and they don't go to their graveyard. They go to, to exile. It's true. It's oh, not, what? it's not traditional mill. Yeah, it's, it's not exile. mill. It's exile the top twenty. Oh yeah, no. Never mind. Wheel of Sun and Moon ain't saving you here, Brian. Yeah, try. I, I have a problem Just with this. Try. Yeah, me. I was gonna say I, I was very. I shocked. was like, yeah, cool. Brian's cool with it. Well, no, when you said mill, Brian's cool with mill. Everybody. When I when Brian's I hear cool mill, everybody. I'm fine with it. But when I'm hearing exile, the... Brian said he's cool. Everybody. No, no, no. The no. next card Brian's doesn't is, deserve to be Brian's on this never list been cool. because it is the best white card currently to exist. And. Also, if it gets out of hand, it's your own fault. Yep. And also, I have them all. Yeah. All right, first <laughs> off, true. first off, I've got to say, I love the flavor text. I await your donation. Eat. It's Smothering Ties. Three and a white. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two. If that player doesn't, you create a token for a uh, treasure token that has tap, sack, add one mana of any color. It's great. Great card for white. White needs that ramp. Especially if you're blowing up lands. <laughs> but they're also they're and, also quite interactable though. Like when you can say they are artifacts, mm-hmm. and you can pl- like you can use you can them. Do, and you can pay two. Yeah, you, you don't, don't have to not pay the two. I just never. Pay I the just two. refuse. Yeah, I won't. I'd rather that. die. Do you know what's <laughs> terrible? I usually the games that I have the most treasures. I usually have like the enchantments that lock down artifacts. Yeah, I don't know why you have a stony silence in that deck. <laughs> Brian's always what? like, sto- yeah, he has stony silence in his Selvala deck, and then he's just like smothering tithe. I'll make everyone draw. I have 80 treasures. <laughs> and everyone's like, okay. Yeah. Weird a, flex, yeah. Brian. But then I just blow up my own stony silence. I was going to say, you're just, try, you, you're just trying to be a threat. I identify as a threat. Yeah. yeah I, well, then, then the really bad thing is when I get out like greater oromancy and it's I so can't bad. blow up my own stuff. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> the next card, Mana Breach. Whenever a player plays a spell, they return a land he or she controls to its owner's hand. Hey, I have that in my Chulane deck. That's a good card. That's yep. why Chulane is on the list. Yeah. That's a really good card in Chulane. Uh, it's very good in Tachova as well. Mm-hmm. Tachova. Tachova. She's in there as well. Uh, Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. This is another I've... new one. This is from Akoria. It's another... Um, very strong. Competitive. Commander. Infinite mana. You know what, though? I don't think it's gen. that... I don't think it's that bad. It needs... I've seen this one go off a few a times. It, yeah. It's a very cool card, and it can yeah. for sure get out of hand. He's... Uh, Simic Commander, so again, a green and blue for a 2-2 human druid, which is good. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type it produced. So that's a great card. for like It, it turns your birds tapping into two mana. Awesome card. It also has a mana sink for five, green, blue. Look at the top five cards of your library. You can put a non-human creature from among them onto the battlefield. The rest on the bottom in a random order. Yeah. Oh, so what? You can put out an Ulamog with that? Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. But it's that would be put, not cast. Yep, so you wouldn't get the cast, but you would be able to get them. It's it's very cool. It, it is a more competitive E commander. And I do think that they're trying to... I think that they've seen that there's a CDH following. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to make a little bit of both. Yeah, they're trying because to... Because you don't have to play Kinnon as a competitive commander. He could you don't still have to play it as a one. commander. That's true. You yep. can just very slot true. it into any deck that has blue and green. Yeah. A little moment. We have another Titan. Wow. Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. But this is, again, uh, Spency Boy. Anyways, um, Ko- Kozilek, this Kozilek, OG Kozilek, is uh, when he, when you cast it, draw four. It's got Annihilator four. Gross. And, and it's uh, a 12-12. And it, it's a 12-12, and it uh, resets your graveyard when it hits a graveyard. It's uh, It's pretty strong. The, the draw four on cast is pretty strong. Yeah, the draw get, four on cast. You get a 10-10 for 12, or a 12-12 for 10 mana, already a pretty strong stat. And then you add draw four. I think the other Kozilek is a little bit more. And then you add Annihilator four. Is a little bit more reasonable. I think the other Kozilek is the most reasonable of all the Titans. I would the, say so. Is that the one that's like uh, the counter if you just Yeah. 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 And yeah, it's I'm got like Menace, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's pretty. And and you have to have colorless mana to cast it. Yeah, so little. He makes a cool commander. Not actually. any color. Colorless. Yeah, I've seen him as a commander. Yeah, it's with the wastes. I okay. think he's a pretty cool one. Yes, that's neat. Acid rain is how you make 
make it so I don't want to play with you. <laughs> I'm just I say as I play Boil. Daniel. Boil is the island's version of this, but Acid Rain is three and a blue. For a sorcery, destroy all forests in play. Don't like that. No, neither do I. Don't like that one bit. Majority of my decks are green. And for anyone wondering, it's from Legends. Go to your LGS. Yeah. Um, Skrithix the Blight Dragon is the infect commander of choice. Yeah. Oh, well, if you're going to do it, just do it. Yeah, also, exactly. they just reprinted it. So, like, what a great opportunity. It's in yeah. Double Masters. Just go hard, boys. Number one, he's a 4 4 flying infect, Dragon Skeleton. Dragon Skeleton. How heavy Pre- metal is that? Pretty he's so cool. cool. Um, you can pay one to give him haste until the end of the turn, and you can uh, one black, sorry, yeah, and you can pay two black to regenerate him. So very strong. So he's like impossible to kill, and he's handsome and beautiful and um, poisonous. I I want to know how he flies when he just has nubs. His nub flies. I uh, I have actually Don't a really worry about it. The, ne- <laughs> the next card on the list is Divine Intervention, which is another Legends card, and I have a very very funny story about this. Uh, there's a competitive circuit where we live. And you get points for winning, obviously. That's how most tournaments run. (laughs) You get no points in this one, though, if you do not win. Only the winner gets points. Mm -hmm. As it should. Someone in that meta plays Divine Intervention as their main con. And it's six white-white. Put two counters on this card. Then they use things like (laughs) Vampire Hex Mage. It's... (laughs) Put two put two counters on this card. Remove a counter during your upkeep. When you remove the last counter from it, the game is over and considered a draw. And they it makes so many people so frustrated. I think it's the funniest thing. It's the it's hilarious as a as a deck archetype. No points. It's just meant to like draw it out. So his whole thing like it's a lot of generate infinite mana, and then uh, everybody draws their whole deck at once. Everyone loses at once. His whole point is to. Everyone draw the game, and it's the f- At, yeah, nobody it's gets the funniest ever. deck archetype I've ever seen. Oh my god, wow. what a ding dong! That's, That's amazing. Hysterical. It's so funny because <laughs> because it just. When people, like I said, they're playing for points, you get one when you win, and that's how you move on. So he puts the whole pod out of the running. <laughs> that's pretty messed up. It's hilarious, and it oftentimes makes it so that no, like there's one person gets a buy in the finals. That would also be that would be kind of cool, like if you were like kind of new and going out and whatever, and yeah. then like you're able to like kind of get up a little higher than you might normally be able to, because this guy is just like, I got you, homie. It's a pretty funny deck, and, it, and it's a lot of it is like a ton of it is shutting down everyone else from winning until he can draw the game. Yeah, that's really I funny. love it. Uh, I mean, that's it's respectable for the memes. Yes, that's for sure. Agent of Treachery is the next one. Agent yeah, of this Treachery is my Chulain Chulain deck. Man. Yes, mm-hmm. this is in Hope's Chulain deck. Um, <laughs> it's a human rogue two three <laughs> deck everywhere. <laughs> five blue blue. Uh, when it enters, gain control of target permanent. A very strong ETB. Begin your end step if you control three or more permanents. You don't control. Draw three cards. Oh, and you flash it. You you bring them back to your hand. Oh, and it's not one of the till it leaves the battlefield. Yeah, you just get it. Take Daniel's commander. It's also make target, him mad. It's also target permanent, not target non land permanent. So you can just take somebody's take their land lands, like an animal. I would that's, never. That's great. Um, Boyle is one that I just alluded to, and it's the, alluded to. You specifically explained allu- what it did. I alluded to it. It's an instant speed one, which is a little better than Acid Rain, but it is destroy all islands. And it's three and a red. Yes, and it's awesome. yeah that <laughs> I counter your stuff. Oh, you're not to like my next card. That's Interesting. crazy. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, the next card, Consecrated Sphinx, and I love this card. I don't I think understand it's so why good. it's on the salty list. Probably because of just how strong its ability is in Commander specifically. That's very true. Because uh, it's whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. So you're not forced to draw. If you were forced to draw, it wouldn't upset people so much because you could accidentally draw, draw yourself. yourself out. But the fact that you can choose to draw, so everyone's turn starts, I'm going to draw two with you. I'm going to draw two uh, with you. I love... I love this in my Zyrus deck or Zyrus, however yep. people want to pronounce so it. So good. Oh, uh, yes. you're, you're going to draw six cards in your upkeep. I will draw 12. I too. It's but, uh, I honestly think it's a great card. I think it's very balanced at its mana cost of six mana for a four, six flyer. Yep. You should have creature removal in your deck mm-hmm. and it's getting draw. It's it definitely should be included. Draw is so important in magic. Ev- everything. Yeah, and if, you, if you're if you not building around something like this, you're just going to end up with 20 cards in your hand that you can't use anyways. Yeah. And discard them. Oof. So the next one, I 
Yeah. I, I absolutely hate land destruction. I, I want to put hate, this in Trin and Silver. Hate. I just want you to know. Gross. So, But it's not a human, so you, good track. But good it's track. a soldier because so, that's the sub-theme of mine. Ah, so Keldon Fire Bombers is three and a red, red creature soldier. And when Keldon Fire Bomber comes into play, each player sacrifices all lands he or she controls except for three. So I find it weird that you Brian, like these cards, Brian, but you don't Brian, like... Brian, I have to read the errata. It is a human soldier now. Ugh. Let her ride. No. Nope. Feed the cat. I, I find it funny that you, you, She'll play. you prefer these cards She'll play. and you don't like Cyclotic Rift. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Daniel's a complicated man. Yeah. Like, oh, it slows Cyclonic Rift, it slows the game down, <laughs> but destroying your <laughs> lands doesn't. Me, yeah. kill, me I'm going to boil followed by killed and fireballs. I hate both. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good point. Uh, you know what? I'm consistent. Palancron is the may next card. May or may not list. be the reason that I play Eldrazi. Palancron <laughs> is uh, infinite mana generator combo for a lot of people. It's a really, really cool card. It has a really unique ability. So it's seven so mana to cost. Cool. It's five blue, blue, uh, four, five flyer. When it comes into play on tap, up to seven lands. And it has a built in bounce for four mana. So it's pretty awesome that way. Mm-hmm. If you have a way to, if your mana taps for two and you have seven mana out, mm-hmm. then you can just continuously get them in. Yeah, you can do it infinitely. You can also, like, you know, the way that I do it is with the. With the Animar, the cost reduction. Yeah, yeah and the Cloudstone oh. Curio. Yeah, yeah. That's really well. You don't good. even need the Cloudstone Curio at a certain I, point. Yeah, I know, but it's nice to just do it for free. Uh this is a fun card as well. Mana Vortex. It's an enchantment. Why that, does blue need? Slim? It's a mana enchantment that uh, Zerk can go fetch. It's one blue, blue, three cost. Each player who controls land sacks one during their upkeep. If at any time there are no lands in play, it's destroyed. If you do not sack a land when it's cast, it's countered. I don't get it. <laughs> Why is this only this far down? It should be a lot higher on this list. Probably because it's, it's so rarely, rarely played. Yeah, uh, it isn't like uh, when you cast it, you have to sack a land. So if you fetch it with Zer, you actually skip that first land. Oh, because it's not being cast. Yeah. Ah, that's Zer a good put. Point. Pretty Zer cool. put. Yep. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Bribery, hilarious card. Bribery should be played. Bribery is actually one of the reasons Primeval Titan is banned. Oh. Because it was played so frequently to go pull out Primeval Titan and old Emrakul. Oh, interesting. So Bribery is three and a blue blue. Search target opponent's library for a creature card and put that card on into play under your control. Then that player shuffles his or her library. Pretty good. So I get to steal anything from your deck is basically... Um, the next one, yeah, I like it a lot. The next one's Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. Um, just got a reprint. Great reprint, I think. I love so the pretty. Eight, uh, eight CMC for a Planeswalker starting at seven. Very high. Uh, yep. Plus two deals uh, three damage to any target. Sorry, I couldn't read that there. It's too fancy with its artwork. Minus X is exile each permanent with CMC costs X or less. That's one or more colors. Oof. Very on theming with his story. Yeah. And then minus 10 is you gain seven life, uh, draw seven cards, then put up to seven permanents from your hand onto the bagel field. Oof. Yeah, yeah, he's very strong. I've only ever got it off once. Like, that's, <laughs> so hard. that's amazing. I really like that ability. Yeah. People do not let it happen. Are you putting that in your new deck? What? Me? Yeah, the one you're making. No, that's uh, anti. Yeah, no. <laughs> the next one. One of, my, the one of my <laughs> favorite cards to cast. I love this card. This is such a good card. Confusion, and I understand entirely, it's 100% justified being on this list. <laughs> I love this card. Do you, do you think it deserves to be further up oh, or where it is is fine? If you, if, you, if, ever, if you read it, it deserves to be here. If you've played against it, it should be spot one or two. <laughs> Especially if you've ever played it against it with Nor and the Wary. Um, confusion in the ranks is three red red oh enchantments. Whenever an artifact creature or enchantment comes into play, its controller chooses target permanent another uh, another player controls, shares the type with it, and you exchange control. Oh, I've been on the receiving end of this. You, yeah, you <laughs> you had Norn the Wary do it, right? Yeah. Where every time it, someone casts something, Norn reblinks to my field, and I take another permanent of theirs. Yeah. I love it. It's so funny. I'm. Uh, in the wrong on this one for sure. 
But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm willing to admit my own mistakes. I mean, funny. It, it can be things. Something can be funny and also annoying and make me want to kill you. Oh, for sure. This so, is like if you magic. ever if things you, can be two things. If you want to make your friends mad, make a make a token deck with this. And make just, a Norn the wary deck. Yeah, that's true. It's so freaking annoying. Someone, uh, we were talking about it in the Discord, and someone's like, "Is there a way to make that deck that isn't just annoying?" And Daniel's like, "Uh." I was like, "I don't know." Daniel has left the chat. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, <laughs> listen, guys. I've got to go. Here's the thing, guys. I've got to leave this Discord server. Bye. Um. Here's a card that I've spoken about many times today. Mm-hmm. Zer the Enchanter. He is one and Esper, so that's white, blue, black. He's a human wizard flying 1-4, which is awesome. Um, when he attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment with CMC 3 or less and put it onto the battlefield if you do shuffle. Zer's very, very strong. Yeah, a lot of those Mino enchantments that we've been talking about today and last week... Um are fetchable with her, so yeah there's a lot of three cost targets that and, well especially since so it's on good. attack yep so Sirs you can attack and if somebody tries to do something you can you can adjust your search to kind of like help like fit the situation you know what i mean so it's pretty cool yeah zer zer is just it's really strong yeah. uh the Drunk. next the next card should not have been rare the should have been mythic yep yeah, it's golos tireless pilgrim five mana i can see that yeah, he, he deserved to be mythic, but Golos Tireless Pilgrim is just first off a great card. He we've talked many times throughout many episodes. He helms so many decks. I have a Turbo Land deck with him. I my, one of my favorite decks to teach people with is Golos because he mana fixes so well. You can build in the uh, the win condition with the Maze's End so easy, so budget friendly. Uh, on enter, he searches your li- uh, library for a land and puts it into play tapped. Mm-hmm. Then shuffle any land so he color fixes whatever you need to do. Mm-hmm. And then he has a mana sink that's two and Wooberg. Exile the top three cards woo. of your library. What'd you say? I said Woo. Oh, I couldn't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn without paying their mana cost. So he is great. He can hit lands with that. Like Golos is just an overall great card i don't think he should be a salt card I, i'm i'm amazed by the variety of decks that you can actually build with him yeah, he's so i was so, taking oh, yeah. a look at the the edh rack oh last the arc the archetype is just it's everything the archetype yeah. like l- options are everything for yeah, golos like it's amazing it's anything and everything and it's awesome i uh i do hate the next card aura shards oh he hate oh, it. i hate I, it i love it hate it uh aura shards is one and Selesnya, like green white. Cards. Whenever a creature <laughs> enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. It is oppressive. Yeah, wow. it just keeps everything and that impressive. you don't want on the board. <laughs> off the board. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, one march of the multitude or secure the waste is enough to just clear your opponents out. It's Absolutely annihilate yeah. somebody's Silvala deck. Yeah, that's true. Somebody <laughs> my, my favorite is uh, the Tender Shoot Dryad, so just every turn you get a new Saperlink, so every time that Saperlink comes in, you're like, wow. boom. This, uh, boom. Beep, beep, yeah. beep, 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 beep. Yeah. The next card on the list is Demonic Consultation, and Demonic Consultation is a combo competitive, piece. yeah, it's a competitive combo piece. So I don't know why it's on the list so much. Number one, I love this card because this card can lose you the game. You can flat out lose on cast of this and card. And it's so it's funny. hilarious. Demonic Consultation is an instant for one black. Name a card. So let's say I name Food Chain. I remove the top six cards of my library from the game and reveal the next card to all players. If it's the named card, it comes to my hand. If not, I remove that card from the game and I continue until I get it. So if Food Chain is in the top six when I name it... You kill yourself. I will exile my deck and lose. And it's instant speed, so many times people are doing this before their turn starts. Ah. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of people try and exile to Thassa's Oracle and exile their deck that way if they have the Oracle in hand. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing, but there is a real chance you can lose the game with it. And I, every time I cast it, I say it's time to consult the demons. <laughs> Then I then I sit there and I say, "Hey demons, it's me, your boy." And I grab <laughs> six and I throw them down to see. And if they're not there, if if food chain's in there, then I just whew, I cry. Um, it's, I'm not too much. I'm it's a good card, but <laughs> the next one's catastrophe. Yeah, is a white card. Catastrophe is real strong. And it's four and a white white again. Urza saga because a lot of strong cards came from there. Yep. And it's destroy all lands, 
or all creatures. Creatures destroyed this way cannot regenerate this turn. Like, just... I, I like that it gives you an or. It's so pretty solid. don't have to destroy all the lands. Just rude. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna end on the next two here. There's there's another row after this, but they're yeah. Actually, I'm gonna do an honorable mention from the bottom real quickly. It's Grip of Chaos. It's four red red for an enchantment. Whenever a spell or ability is put onto the stack, reselect its target at random if it has a single target. Oh, it's from Scourge. Yeah, like that's that. that's a pretty fun one. I like that personally, but I like chaos things, so Same. I wouldn't be salty about it. I do like chaos. I'm yeah. I'm I'm the biggest proponent for chaos. I just think that there's something so inherently in- amusing. About All right, it. last mm-hmm. two, and the the last one on the list, real doozy, and I need to buy one. It's a card I don't have for once. Wow. Yeah, uh, I'll let Brian go with this black enchantment here. So this actually seems like it could go good in Yogmoth. So it's tainted ether, two and a black black. Whenever a creature comes into play, its controller sacrifices a creature or a land. Kind of on, it's on, it's on brand. It's pretty good for Marin again, too, something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. Marin, any, any salt hide, this would be great for Moldrotha style things. Yeah, yeah, totally. You sack your land, you replay the land and have it untapped. And the final. Yeah, the final one, land equilibrium, which I have never in all of the time I've played Magic seen someone play this card. I would have a stroke if somebody played this against me because my I love to land wrap. It's like one of my favorite things. I would lose my mind and that's why I need to buy the card. It's two blue blue. If an opponent controls at least as much land as you do, he or she must sack a land for each land they put into play. That's amazing. That's strong. Especially with Zendikar coming out, like uh, when they're going back to Zendikar and having all the new land ramp. Landfall land ramp. Yeah, this will shut that landfall nonsense down real quick. Did they confirm they're bringing back landfall? Uh, they didn't say landfall, just like a bunch of land-based mechanics. Probably, it's I, I mean, this landfall, maybe. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure Zendikar will something, something land. Something, something <laughs> landfall, maybe Golgarian. We've, a... we've seen Give the expeditions, I'll help you find. Ugh. We've seen the packs, there's Omnoth with another color of mana, we get it. Omnoth descending. Omnoth in the sky. <laughs> Choir music. With, with flying, <laughs> yeah, just Omnoth with flying. <laughs> Omnoth five five for just four so flying. <laughs> he has no no cool abilities. Yeah, just flying. just just flying. So. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the second part oh of our God. salt list. Cre- Landfall creates four four angels, <laughs> <laughs> elemental angels, elemental <laughs> angels, elemental angels. That would be uh, pretty strong. That would be hilarious. Also, that'd be too oh, wow. strong. Yeah, love it. Anyways, landfall. Guys. No, it, since it's white, landfall will gain three life. <laughs> Again, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I'd be all right with that too. That's, that's pretty good. Alrighty, guys. Well, like we said, it was very fun to be able to go through the last half of this list with Brian because he is the king of playing slug. Yeah, Brian has a lot of these cards in his decks. So I'm not yeah. gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brian's just like, what's the problem? And hence why stop? I'm dead first all yeah. the time. Not all the time. Either you're dead first or you win, and there's no in between with you, my dude. It's true. Yeah, that's so, very true. You know what? I, you know, I respect that. I respect a man that really sticks to his guns. Thank you guys so, so much for uh, tuning for t- in. Yeah, make we- sure to check out our streams when we do play on uh, Saturdays. Right now, um, we have lots of articles coming out on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. We have video content. Check check out what's going on. Go to our website www.intothe99.com. We have lots of things going on. Yeah, and links to all of our socials there. And actually, and right now we're actually recording this on a Thursday. Yeah, Whoa. we are. <laughs> but. Just uh, it might be a little bit late, but Necrozak, our new host, just uh, uploaded his first video. Yeah, so definitely take a look at it. Yeah, and thank you again for joining the team, Zach. Yes, I'm very pleased. He, he's putting in awesome work. And we have an awesome guy. team that we work yeah, with. We're in really general. lucky. And again, check out our website with all our different uh, writers uh, putting up articles. Um, lots of different things going on. Um, and if you have anything that you think that you would want to share with the community, definitely feel free to send us an email or hit us up on any social media and we'll definitely take a look at any articles that you might want to Absolutely. Wanna share. We, we're always interested in hearing from guest writers. Yep. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, guys. See ya.